yeah, Myron's doing a lot better. Um, he was out there moving around at practice today, so um, we're looking for – he'll probably be day-to-day from here on out, but um, I think he's, he's heading in the right direction. Uh, questions? Yeah, you know, after a 77-point game, uh, what's practice like? What is, what, is there, what is there to teach? I know you said there was a lot to clean up after that yeah. game, so what's the focus this week? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously on both sides of the ball and on special teams, there's things that we can we can clean up and, and, and do a better job of. You know, I think we left a couple of touchdowns um, out there on offense and then um, defensively just have to do their job. That's what I'm telling them every day is just, hey, do your job. One play at a time, you do that, good things will happen. With so many new players, how nice was it to evaluate everybody, kind of unload the, the, the whole roster onto the field yep. with, with that kind of game? Yeah, that was. That was nice to see. And, and um, you know, obviously the first two weeks, we just weren't able to do that, the games that we were playing and the opponents we were playing. And, and um, you know, I, I challenged them all week to jump on them early so, you know, your guys could play, you know, because – who knows what that thing looks like if we don't go out there and jump on them early and, and all that. So it was great to see a lot of guys play and, and uh, get a lot of evaluation on a bunch of guys. And, and there will be uh, a number of those guys that will play this week again. We saw Sean Shaw play a little bit of tight end. You mentioned it after the game as well, and then he's there on, on the depth chart. What went into that decision, and, and how is he progressing at that position? Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's a natural at that position. Obviously, there's some things that – uh, he just hasn't seen before, um, so he's he's um, getting better at that. But he's done a little bit of that at Iowa State, um, kind of in in a in a receiver type role, doing some tight end stuff. And, and a lot of these NFL scouts that come by ask um, just because of his frame and his size if if he could do that. And um, I actually brought it up to him before the NFL scouts. Um, this this fall camp and and um, earlier just saying hey you know I talked to the Eagles I talked to the Cardinals like hey this is a guy that I think has that capabilities you know I played with a Zach Ertz that um, you know that's just a basically a big receiver and learned how to block and do all those things and and um, the biggest thing about Sean is you know when we when I brought it up to him. Um, I guess two weeks ago, he's like, Coach, I'll do whatever to help the team. That's just who he is, and, and uh, he's tough. I mean, he he's a like a farmer cowboy guy, like works out in the fields in Oklahoma and, like, rides, you know, bulls and, and horses and stuff. So the dude is tough. Like, um, I knew, so I knew the tight end spot wouldn't be a, a problem for him. GJ, it had an unusual kickoff time. I think it was moved back because of the heat. Obviously, it was a late game because of how long it took. But, I mean, how are you all able to kind of – be playing at an un- unusual time where your offense was just able to put up so much and the defense was able to do so well on Saturday. Yeah, I loved it. Um, you know, we were able to watch some games throughout the day and then get out there and, and uh, it wasn't, you know, extremely hot. Obviously, um, it wouldn't have mattered last week what time we played at. It wasn't, you know, the temperature um, wasn't too harsh for us. So, um, the 7.30 kickoff was, was great, but now we'll go back to 6, more of a regular time, and, and I don't really, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever, just play. You all have not had to get on an airplane yet in, in non-conference. Both road games were bus trips, obviously playing here at home, so you don't have to worry about flights, hotels, all that stuff. How has that kind of translated on where your, y'all's legs maybe aren't quite as weary as maybe other teams in the conference? Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Um, you know, I think obviously driving the bus to Waco and San Antonio and, and doing all that, but you still get the hotel experience. Um, so we get to get that routine down, which is good. So, cause we do that on road games and home games, which is good. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I think we played two really physical opponents to start off the game or start off the year with, with Baylor and UTSA. So we're a little banged up. It's good to, we'll get some guys back this week, uh, hopefully. And some guys are banged up and some guys are, getting back from getting banged up. So. I've covered a lot of Texas State games over the years, and I can't remember the last time that they were this big of a favorite or this much expected to win against an FBS school because of how Nevada's been struggling. How do you all kind of just taper them down and let them know, even though this may be unfamiliar territory for some of them being this much of a favorite? Yeah, I, I, and you know, if you ask the guys on the team, they probably don't even know that. Um, you know, I think they do a really good job their head coach does a really good job. Uh, he's going to have those guys prepared. They're going to play extremely hard. Um, you know, we got to play them last year and know what type of team they are and kind of what they're about. Um, I think they did a really good job in the portal this off season and, and adding some some key guys and, and a couple guys that we recruited and a couple guys that we know. So, um, 
you know, they'll be ready. Um, you know, they played really well this past week. And um, so those guys will be, you know, probably have some confidence to them and, and um, that type of deal. So we got to come out here and, and execute at a really high level. Just that, that's going to come down to the, the whole year. Can we execute or not? That's what I was going to ask you is last year they played Nevada. Obviously, Nevada won that game. But can you take a lot from that game film just because the rosters on both sides have changed so much? Yeah, I say Nevada. I don't know. Does do, do y'all say that Nevada, Nevada? Does it matter? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I say Nevada, um, and I, I think they did like when we played them last year. They did like a thing like Nevada, Nevada. I don't. I say Nevada. Um, yeah, we played them last year um, up there on the road, and and um, you know I, I think they they have a lot of guys returning. Obviously, we brought some UIW guys here. Um, there's some guys still that played them last year, so. Kind of a unique situation, I guess, but um, I guess it is what it is. You know, quarterback situation, we got to see all four on Saturday, you know, with a few days of, of getting to, to live with it. Talk about their performance, what it was like to see Malik get out there and play. Yeah. Are we potentially going to see both this week against Nevada? Yeah. I'm sure that depends on if it goes right, but Nevada, Nevada. I'm sorry. There I go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I say Nevada. Maybe that's like an East Texas Texas thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, I thought TJ started off really well. He played really well, and uh, we were able to get him out in the second half. And and obviously Malik gets in there. He's not like your usual backup quarterback, and um, so it was really good to see him go out there and perform. And that dude just loves football. And and one thing I, I've made an example of Malik multiple times in our team meeting, like. That dude has a great attitude every day. He loves football. He's tough. Like, that's what you want. And you could see that the way he plays. Like, he was just happy to go out there and play. Like, that's, that's the way it should be. Um, you know, you're, you're going to get your opportunities. So make the most of them. And, and, and he did that. And yeah, he's definitely going to play. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that's super athletic and, and uh, can help us win. And um, so his role will continue to play and, and, and continue to grow. And, and um, I was just really happy for him and, and, and all that. So um, PJ got in there and, and uh, he did some good things. Obviously, uh, PJ is a dynamic runner. Like that dude is as good a runner as Malik is. PJ might be a better runner than Malik. Um, Malik's just older and, and done it before. Um, so. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, obviously we want to keep his red shirt, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got a, a couple more snaps this year. And then, and then CJ is a guy that just does everything right. Um, he's, he's, he knows exactly what to do on every play. Um, he's kind of like a coach out there on the field. And, and um, so it was good to see him. Uh, I think that was his first college action. Um, so that was great to see him get out there and play. Cause even those small snaps like that, will that'll be big for him uh, when he, you know, continues to grow as a player. Even looking at the, the relationship between Finley and, and Hornsby coming yep. in, both of them obviously want to start. They yep. transferred in from, from big programs. But for them to both, uh, it seems like they have a, a really good relationship and a good workflow yep. with the whole situation, no matter who goes in there. How, how much easier has it made that situation with, with those two attitudes? Yeah, it's been it's been awesome, and, and a lot of credit to, to both of those guys, and and Coach Leftwich and and Lindsey and, and Coach Keppel, and and um, all those guys that that are in there. Like, that's, it's a real family in there, and and um, they do a really good job of supporting each other. And I th I thought it was real cool that one. I, I can't remember if it was a game or practice or what it was. I think it was a practice highlight that we showed, and you see before the season, obviously when we told. TJ and Malik that TJ was going to be a starter in one of those next couple of days of practice. Like they had to do something like handshake after something, you know, it was like those guys really care about each other. They really care about the team. And, um, that's what, that's what it takes. Cause I talk to these guys all, all the time. Like you never know when your number is going to get called. So if you're sitting there pouting and, and you're, and you're not getting yourself ready, then it'll show when you get your opportunity. So, uh, you got to always be locked in, always focused and uh, ready to go, which is a lot easier said than done. Uh, how you doing, sir? Jaylen, Good. Jaylen how are you? Uh, Nevada doing, or Nevada? Uh, Nevada. Nevada. There you go. <laughs> I'm doing a feature story on Chance Maine, and I just had two questions. Um, how did you get in your radar that led him to transfer to Texas State? Yeah, so Chance was at UIW before I got yeah. there. And I didn't know Chance. Um, I actually called him when he was in the portal, tried to get him to come back to UIW. Um, and then when he got in the portal after the season or got released or whatever, 
he was doing some visits and he visited here and I think really liked it. Um, I th then I think Colorado came back and, and offered him a lot of money probably if I had to guess. And then uh, went, to, went to Colorado and then wasn't happy there and then got back in the portal and we were able to get him. Journeyman, uh, what can you say about him that makes him stand out? I think just his athleticism and his, his length and his size. Um, you know, he's probably 6'5", 250, um, somewhere around there, and um, just loves football. Another one of those guys that's just tough and um, loves football, and, and he doesn't let, like, little, little like, bumps and bruises bother him, you know. Um, so he just loves football and is really grateful for this opportunity. And, um, you know, I think he'd been a guy, like, if he would have been here for the summertime and stuff, he probably would have been voted captain. He's one of those type of guys. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You know, real quick on, on Nevada, Nevada. Now you got me thinking about it too much. The, what, are you, what, are you, what are you anticipating from their, their defense? Obviously, the tough times for them, they've been on a, a losing streak since last season. But yeah. what, are you, what are you anticipating early on looking at that film going up against your offense? Yeah, I think they um, they present some challenges for sure. Um, some of the things that they do um, structurally um, is a little bit unique, and um, I think they they play really hard, and um, they're coached really well. I mean, their their head coach is a defensive guy, um, so obviously that's where kind of their their emphasis is. So um, they'll be ready to go. He's coaching a lot of big time games, and um, you know, their last win was here, right? The last one was here at Texas State, or no, it was there. Yeah, it was there against Texas State. So um, they'll probably have some confidence about that. So we we got to get ready to go. Sorry, one more. Um, UTSA, you guys uh, had a had a little struggle picking up blitzes, yeah. and you guys did a great job last week picking up the blitzes. You can get you guys think Nevada will do that to try to pressure that quarterback. Yeah, I think with our offense, um, everyone has a unique plan and. Um, just like Jackson State, they kind of came out and did some things that they hadn't really showed on film. Um, UTSA was probably, you know, for the most part, they, they did some, some unique things and some certain formations that we hadn't seen before. But um, I think, to be honest with you, the UTSA deal was more about just us executing and, and kind of got punched in the mouth. So. And you mentioned some some guys maybe coming back this week, and some guys who got hurt last week. Any any updates you can give us on, on any players? We know Myron Warren's probably out. Connor Fox, Nash Jones. Any yeah. any other updates? Uh, yeah, those those guys will probably be out. Connor's getting getting closer. Um, he'll probably be a day to day uh, situation. Probably won't play though. Um, Myron, same type deal. Uh, I think Myron physically is getting really close. It's just that. You know that close to that deal, I want to be safe and, and make sure he's he's in you know hundred percent type deal. So, um, and then we have a couple guys coming back. Um, so we'll kind of see what that looks like exactly. It'll be more of a day to day and type deal. Jordan Revels still out. I'm interested. Uh, yeah, we'll kind of see. You know, he's working on a couple things. We'll kind of see what that looks like too.